Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for the iSpire Wand Diamond Dab of the Day with my Grav Bubbler. Hello, everybody. Today is Sunday. Thanks for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Send a subscription. Add to the family. It's going to be 20000 soon. Send a like, and I respond to all those comments. Let's get started on today's topic. Today's topic is how can we decrease our suffering in life? That's right. The world is full of suffering. But you know what? It's also full of people overcoming it. For many years, I really didn't understand pain and suffering. I thought they were different. But you know what? They're really wrapped together, unfortunately, the nature of suffering. Because when you go back to painful episodes in your life, either losing people that were dear to you or having horrible things happen, in each of those experiences, there's immediate horrible pain, like a knife cutting through your heart, through your brain, through your emotions, and frankly, closing in the heels, tight response behind physical pain and emotional grief, comes something else. It feels really almost can hold it. Suffering. Suffering, unfortunately, is like putting butter on top of whipped cream. I know, right? It's the extra that our mind adds to painful situations. So at this very point, when your mind starts to fiddle with the pain and grief, or either one of them, the possibility of doing things different. But you're still in the midst of wherever that pain is. And you know what? While the pain can't be avoided, because it's the price of being a human with a heart, there are ways to reduce the self-generated suffering. Over the years, even in the immediate, there are tactics that we can do, use, bring out, respond to, to help reduce that type of suffering. We need to discuss it. We don't want to spin our story. Spin doctors are media maestros who take an event and really distort it to serve financial or political gains. We often do something similar when it comes to our emotional life, although we don't realize we're doing it. The starting point is whatever that painful experience is. But you know, we tell our stories after it happens about what it could mean based on past experiences or future fears. We tell ourselves after an end of a relationship, it's gonna ruin our lives. In other words, what we do is we stir the situation and make it worse. The source of suffering could be ourselves. So we need to practice noticing our thoughts and our feelings and stopping ourselves, catching ourselves creating a story on top of a story on top of a story. Maybe then we can liberate ourselves from that tendency. In the midst of difficult situations, people often say in a very gloomy way, my life will never be the same again. You know what? That's a weird or ridiculous statement because it only sounds negative. The statement that our lives will never be the same again is not false. In fact, it's true every moment of our lives. Change is always happening. You know what? Sometimes change is for the good. Sometimes it's painful. But we never know the ultimate outcome of change. We're always in motion. What might seem horrible today may in the long run turn out to be just what we needed to take the next step in our lives. It's inevitable. Change. So we need to try to smile more. Something as simple as finding a smile that's inside of us, even when life hurts, can help us access that deep well of joy. It may feel forced at first, but when it happens, watch your state of mind when you practice smiling and notice how people react differently to you when you're smiling at them. This kind of positive feedback loops. Yes, it makes a big difference in overcoming our suffering rather than being entrenched in it. Maybe we need to jolt ourselves out of our usual routine when suffering, because sometimes suffering comes because we're grounded down into a rut. 
we obsess over our loss and can't think of anything else. We're just down there covering our heads like this. Well, at times like that, it might help to give a jump start to our psyche and our soul. Something we wouldn't normally do. Maybe it's time to take that dream trip next year plan after all the bullshit's going on with sicknesses in the world. Maybe it's time to register for your yoga class. Maybe it's time to say a kind word as you pass a stranger on the street. Whatever it is may pull you out of a rut. Give it a try. See how it changes the nature of our suffering. When we experience pain, it's easy to isolate ourselves because we believe no one has it worse than we do. While whatever pain we're experiencing is definitely unique to us, it helps to remember that all human beings share the capacity for joy and suffering. Having contact with someone else who's also having a difficult time and offering them simple kindness can be a great antidote to your own suffering. We always talk about generosity, patience, compassion for others. Bring flowers to somebody. Take time to listen to somebody's stories. As you walk down the street, instead of just flipping a quarter to the homeless person, tell them you hope they have a nice holiday. Volunteer somewhere. You may not be ready to do this right away, but once you've thought about it and have gone through the acute phase of a painful experience, you'll see that we can actually push ourselves beyond our comfort zone and spend time with somebody else who's going through a hard time and offer simple kindnesses to that person or people. And you know what? Watch what happens inside of you when you do it. You know, basic goodness is a wonderful concept. It really is. It reminds us that no matter how chaotic or negative the circumstances of our life are, there's still a ground of basic goodness in ourselves and in the universe we can count on. If we're willing to take an unbiased look, we will find that in spite of all of our problems and confusion, all our emotional and psychological ups and downs, that there is something basically good about our existence as human beings. When you're in the midst of deep pain, you got to allow yourself to touch that truth or at least the possibility that it's true. You can do it in a very simple way. Just walk outside and appreciate the sun or the rain in your face. Take a sip of cool, fresh water. Any of those actions can help remind us in a multitude of ways that the world still supports us. The basic truth is deeply healing and deeply reassuring. It is good, if not great, to remember that while there is self-generated suffering, as I've discussed, there's also self-generated happiness. We need to make some. We need to self-generate the happiness because you know what? Suffering, who wants to suffer? The unfortunate part of it is everybody suffers at some point in their life. The key, the true key is how you come out of it. That's right. I can't stop the suffering. It's a human thing. Unfortunately, we're all going to experience some type of suffering. But you know what we don't have to experience? We don't have to experience that suffering alone. And we don't have to experience that suffering forever. We now have tactics that we can use to minimize our suffering an amazing thing. Here we go with our wand. We're going in at a high temperature, 500 degrees. Let's see that vapor rise and take our bubble hit. Remember everybody, if you enjoyed this video about how to minimize our suffering, let's get the channel to 20,000. Please subscribe. This has been The Real Senior Stoner. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. And let's stop the suffering, at least minimize it. Cheers. Wow. <clears throat> the wand.
Thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a great day. This has been the Real Senior Stoner trying to help us suffer less in life. Cheers.